Hello, Tim Wilmot here, and welcome to my watercolour demo. This time, a painting based on a photo sent to me by one of my subscribers. A little while ago, I did a rainy scene based on a photo someone had sent me, and I did then request um, anyone, anyone that's got any interesting photograph that might be suitable for a watercolour, um, a future watercolour video, please send one in. So this is the second one I'm doing. And this uh, picture, this photo has been kindly sent to me by someone called Louisa. And it's a picture of a pretty town in Brittany, France called Vitra. I think I'm pronouncing it fairly correctly. V-I-T-R-E. So what struck me about this, um, this scene is uh, its suitability for a watercolor picture because we've got we've got nice um, uh, nice tonal values. So, for example, we've got a very light area down in the bottom of the street level, and there are lots of dark shadows where we've got the different levels of the building. Um, very dark on the right hand side a uh, nice sort of framing as well for the composition we've got the right hand side of this building and then the left hand we've got the shadow going up the wall um, causing creating a nice uh, border on the left hand side um, yes yeah, so so nice range of tonal values the lights and the darks and I uh, try to look at a picture and think well where where are the where where is it darkest where is it lightest and maybe have those two areas um, as close to each other or adjacent um, if I can. Also, we've got the cool sky, a blue, a bluish sky, um, nice timber, timber work patterns on this building, which is sort of reddish color. So a nice, um, uh, we've got the, the nice cools and the warms and a bit of a warm warm uh, feeling to the wall on the left hand side as well. Nice figures, uh, some in the sun, some in the shade. Uh, there's a bit of bunting going across the street here. Don't know whether I'll include that, but that's, that's quite a nice thing to have um, in a narrow street scene is sort of washing or some kind of uh, banner. Um, or power lines going from one side to the other to 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 uh, connect up the two halves. Um, yes, yeah, so it's it's got a, a little bit of, of everything. One big challenge I've got with this picture is the orientation. This photo is portrait layout, um, which is okay. But for videos, I need to be a widescreen. Uh, I need to be 16 by 9 uh, landscape orientation. So I've got to squash or stretch this scene out a little bit and try and invent something on the right hand side there to to compensate for the different dimensions. All right, so on to the outline drawing. So the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford uh, watercolor paper. This is 300 grams in weight, not surface, so the medium texture, not too rough. And it, the size is 15 inches across by 11 inches down. I've secured it with some uh, masking tape just DIY masking tape and the pencil I'm using is a 3B pencil so fairly soft to do the outline sketch so starting from the left hand side thinking about the perspective of the, of the buildings and leading the eye down to down to the uh, the, the back building there um, so again, from a composition point of view, this scene's got 
it, it's sort of it's, it's painting a story. You want to the, the viewer wants to explore this street, wants to go down and, and look at this um, really interesting building with the Tim work. You want to see what's around the corner, um, left or right. So just an indication of some of the main windows on that focal point building. And the background building, a little window protruding out of the roof, the chimneys, those two uh, prominent chimneys. And then that very dark corner at street level where there's the um, there's a doorway, quite some quite dark shadows in there. So I said that I had to compensate for the orientation of the um, of the photograph. So I'm actually I'm not sure whether that's too much on the right hand side, but um, there we are. I've had to stretch the scene out left and right, trying to imagine what might be there over the left and over on the right, which doesn't really matter too much because they are on the side of the picture, so they're not really um, a focal point of the composition. So it doesn't matter too much um, about any details or fiddly little things left and right. So just trying to come come down to street level and getting some interest with, uh, let's have a couple of figures. Not too centrally placed, but just sort of off center. And have them um, sort of pointing in slightly different directions so that they're not, uh, it doesn't look like a, a three-legged race going down the street. So just a quick outline of those figures there. So fast forward to the initial wash and starting with the sky. I want to get quite an intense sky, a bit bluer than the actual photograph. So I'm mixing here of a few blues to get this deep, deep color I want. I'm using a Raphael mop brush here, which is a synthetic a synthetic brush, a synthetic hairs, and does allow you to, it's, it, it's got good um, retention, holds a lot of water, and has nice um, sharp edges as well, and, and a really good point. So this might appear quite dark, but it will all dry a lot lighter. Now, going into the building, the main building, it's a sort of warmish light red color, painting over the windows, background, building, those chimney stacks, which is a sort of they're more of a burnt sienna, brownish color. 
and then the building at the back is predominantly grey. Continue on down the main building, if I can call it that, down to these figures and a similar color of the left hand building. Just applying strokes in different directions just to give a slight variation in texture and finish. Go a bit cooler down towards the bottom. So I added in a bit of blue there. Go over the figures. So just in front of the, just in front of the figures, that will be the lightest area. And then the background building is, it sort of has this green um, front to it on the lower level. Down to street, down to street level. And cover up the right hand side, just want to cover up the paper with a sort of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix. If I could describe the palette to you, the colors I've got. Um, so from the top, I've got neutral tint. Then second one down is a burnt umber, then burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a viridian green, a cobalt green, uh, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, uh, cadmium red, then a light red, which you saw me just use there, a light red and a cadmium orange. And finally at the bottom, a lemon yellow, I think it is, or a cad, a cad yellow. Quite a, quite a bright yellow. So we're coming to the end of the wash now. Just mop up the bottom. I've got a slight gradient, a slight slope on the painting of about 10 degrees, 15 degrees or so. So it's, gravity is gradually playing its part. I'm just going to mop up that. So I've got to let everything dry now which I would speed up, or I have speeded up the process with a hairdryer. And we'll get to the next stage, which is adding in some of the, the darker areas with a smaller brush. So that's uh, the drying process complete. So everything is 100% dry now. You can see it's gone a lot lighter that, that the, particularly the, the buildings, um, they're not as dark as they were. So a slightly smaller brush now. It's still a mop brush. Um, from Raphael. And this is a, uh, this is their size four, I think it is. So I'm just mixing up their B3 
bit of cobalt blue, burnt sienna in the corner of that palette. And I just want to get in the left hand side of the main building. Again, this brush has got a very good point to it, very good, and a very good edge as well. When there's not uh, when there's not too much paint on the brush, get a very a very nice uh, sharp edge. Good for doing some detail work. Like now, I've just turned the brush uh, sort of ninety degrees and got that nice point. Enables me to get a a, a good sharp edge. coming down the top of the building and some sort of window or extension coming out of the roof there. So a bit of the shadow underneath the eave of the roof. And I'll just use a bit of neutral tint there at the top just to enable me to go a little bit darker. So background building the again the, the shadow underneath the eave of the roof that's uh, the, the building that's facing us and just a few lines towards the top of the now coming down to the next level another dark shadow just a slight 45 degree angle And giving a giving a sort of indication of the the height of the sun with those angles, and then down to the ground floor level. Quite a sort of complex pattern of shadows in here. So I'm just giving an impression of all of the different shapes of shadows we've got in there and quite dark as you can see down to the street level and continuing on to the adjacent building which I've just stretched a little bit in fact all these buildings are just a, a tiny bit wider than they are in the photograph 
and then the base level Don't need to worry about the, the right hand edge too much because the um, the the building on the right hand side the dark shadows will then come over that uh, edge So now for some shadows on the left hand side, left hand building. So I use there a light red and the neutral tint, giving us a nice warm shadow and quite dark as well with that neutral tint. Try not to go over this too many times, just to retain its freshness. If, if, if I go over it too many times, I'll just lose that that um, sparkle. And then um, it looks like another roof window. Same color. And then this fairly big window, which I will briefly put in, not too much detail. Dark shadow at the top, bit of an angle in the top right corner of that window, a sort of 45 degree angle. Now I'll get into some of the detail uh, timber work that sort of that sort of crisscross lattice pattern on the front of this lovely building, um, which is sort of warm. It's like a light red color, um, and I'll need a smaller brush for this. So a, a synthetic, a little synthetic brush will do, just make sure things are dry first of all. Mixing a bit of light red there, touch of cadmium red just to make it a bit more intense. And then starting top left corner of this building. And not, not too precise because um, you know, it's an old building and if you look close, there's not too many straight lines. So well, apart from the actual facade, but uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of the lines are sort of wavy and uh, I think of it, I just emphasize that, that would give it more of the, um, the aged look of it. 
more of a sort of ancient look. And then down to the bottom, street level, around, uh, carefully around this figure. Go over to the right. So there's not too much water in this mix. So it's almost verging on a dry a dry brush stroke here and then get in some verticals around the windows just a few lines just a few smaller lines underneath that top window and then repeating that below trying to this slightly indented uh, the uh, next level down so just trying to um, figure that out and a few almost horizontal lines and of course with perspective the lines the the, the width gets narrower as as it goes away in the distance Now these lines in between the verticals are not, they're not all of them horizontal. You've got like a sort of arrow diagonal pattern to them. Um, so just try and think it through first before committing to paint on the paper. There we go, around that window, that um, first floor window. And then a few more lines. Not all of them. Do, if you do too much, it ends up being like a, an illustration and not not a piece, not a, a piece of art. So we've got a drain pipe going down the gap between the main building and the left hand building. something going on with some sort of shadow coming across the left hand edge of the main building now these windows a sort of mix of cobalt blue and cerulean blue Again, a fairly simple rendition of, of those windows. With that blue. There's another blue window on that background building. A little bit lighter than the ones on the left. And then that right hand background building has got um, it's a slight sort of viridian green to it. So and a, and a sort of crisscross pattern to the windows, quite small frames. Not, not do all the little tiny frames, just a few of them.
So I needed to go a lot darker, as you can see, with the main building. Um, these darker, darker lines following the line of the roof and then the side of the building. Um, and then under the eave of the roof. some kind of funny hole in the edge of the roof there not sure what that's all about maybe something was pulled up through that gap to the top window in previous times So I've got a slightly smaller brush now and getting some darker shadows in the windows. underneath the some shadows underneath the timber work now I'm doing a slight angular line there because I can see that we've got some sort of joists coming out from underneath the uh, horizontal, the horizontal timber. So just to give that sort of jagged edge to that um, underneath the window sills. Trying to keep it looking good from a perspective point of view darker shadow under the background building um, window down the chimney at least I think it I think it's a chimney there obviously chimney on the top but I'm, I'm pretty sure the as it goes down, that's just an extension of the chimney. And the dark window where there's a, there was a figure in there. Well, there is a figure, I think it's a figure in there. So this is the shadow now on the left-hand building on the ground ground floor level. And I sort of started on the masking tape, went right across all in one if I can. to keep that freshness
Just add a few more darks to the that green doorway in the background building. And there's this small narrow building to the left of that. Just add something to the the top of that background building on the right. Give some definition to the apex roof. A few more shadows. As I say, don't need to pay too much um, attention to the right hand side because that will be um, that we'll, we'll cover over that with the dark the very dark of the right hand building yet to come now I don't want to put too much more detail on the main building otherwise it'll become a little bit too fussy and overworked Just a few really dark marks there just to, um, again, there's some joists coming out from underneath the roof. just a few dry brush strokes to indicate the lines of bricks here helps with the perspective as well gives a bit more texture to the wall So the next stage is going to be the dark shadows going down the right hand side uh, across the foreground and then up the left hand side. I do want to make sure everything is really dry now so I'm just speeding up the process with my hairdryer and the shadows on the left hand side are quite soft the edges are quite soft so I'm going to apply just a little bit of clean water on the left hand building So with my big mop brush, just the outline of where the shadow edge will be. And now quite intense 
with the start of the right hand building at the top I'm using the my biggest mop brush again just to help me apply lots of color quickly across this area so I don't I really don't know what was over on that right hand side because I'm having to um, just just imagine what what that right hand building was um, and there are some angles some timber timber supports in there so just sort of give an indication of that with those with those areas left unpainted introduce a few reds into that as well as I come down to street level and then we're going to go across just mop up some of that moisture was just a little bit too wet now the shadows going across the street so I'm just using the side of the mop brush and the, um, this particular brush you can get a really good sharp edge with it as well provided you've not got too much paint on the brush so just going a bit mad with the shadows here adding in some blues different amounts of moisture and a fairly warm shadow on the left hand side because the the ground level it's got like a red front to it so so this shade's got a lot of red to it and you can see there where I damp, dampen the paper we've got a soft edge appearing so I've got to work quite quickly to join up with the street level shadows There's a bit of a shadow on the left of the main building. And then under the first level, not too straight. So these figures now, just really um, all one value. And then after doing the body, the legs come down to the foreground shadows, which is still quite moist. So it's got a nice uh, connection going between the two. And then this figure's companion 
pointing in a slightly different angle. Have the legs a little bit different on this one. smaller brush get us some details of that ground floor window on the main building observing perspective So next step, um, when everything is dry, it's going to be to get in some more detail with some darks. So I've just fast forwarded to a stage when everything is 100% dry and I can go in with the uh, a smaller synthetic brush here add in some more details on those windows and the ground floor shop front or whatever it is of the left hand building here just a few lines not not um not all of them because this is on the the left hand side i don't want to draw a viewer's attention over to that side i want the attention to be um maybe where the two figures are or just beyond just to the right of the two figures in the in the lighter area Got a small flat brush now just to get in some broad lines. I'm just sort of Make it, making it up as I'm going along. What might be over here. There are a few little uh, bollards in the street, just some short vertical marks.
And now a few dry brush strokes on the street just to help lead the eye in. Not, not too many and not sort of equally spaced. Um, so some nice lines going down the street and then some horizontal ones coming across. Let's just pop in a few more lines. The base of that window was partly in those shadows. A few darker windows just at the top of the The sort of entrance to that uh, that shop. So we're nearly at the end now. And what I do, what I normally do at the very end of the painting is just maybe pick on a, a few highlights with some white gouache. Let me just get in that darker, looks like a doorway or something like that. First of all, with a flat brush. So with a little bit of white gouache now. Try not to overdo it with a very small brush. Just add in some highlights to the tops of the figures and their shoulders. just helps a little bit with defining them. Quite useful against a dark background as well. Um, let's get in some horizontal lines across that window frame as well. down the end, tops of the bollards. So I think uh, I'm done there. Um, what I'll do now is just crop this picture and display the end 
painting. There we are. Um, so my interpretation of a photograph kindly sent in by Louisa of Vitra, Brittany. Um, a nice mixture of cools and warms and tonal values as well. Uh, the challenge was I had to take a a photograph that was in, in portrait orientation and then stretch it to a landscape orientation. I haven't um, cropped it out here. Um, this is still this is still the um, like quarter imperial size, so it's it's uh, fifteen inches across by eleven inches down. Um, two figures there walking up the street, adding a bit of interest. So, if you'd like to have um, a photograph, a landscape photograph, um, potentially for me as a, a subject for a future video, I very much welcome um, you sending me something that might be suitable. If you, if you have a look at the videos I've done previously, or if you have a look at my website, um, timwilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com you can see the sort of style I prefer um, but yeah please um, consider sending me a, a photograph for future uh, production um, I do have a few requirements so um, you must have taken the photograph so you own you own that photograph uh, I don't want to get in trouble with anyone uh, with copyright issues or any legal issues um, and you haven't sold the photograph to anyone else um, I would need the photo location as well we're good to to give out the uh, photo location and one final point you must be a subscriber to my YouTube channel please as well um, any comments please add them below in YouTube comments um, or if you do have a photograph to say, please email that to me as a JPEG or similar to my email address, timothywilmot at gmail.com. So that's a T I M O T H Y W I L M O T at gmail.com. Uh, so thanks very much for watching and catch up with you next time. Thanks very much indeed.